thank you for coming to church. We pray that God will richly bless you. We want to specially thank those of you that are fellowshipping with us for the first time. We pray that God will richly bless you. And we want to say thank you for choosing to fellowship with us today. You could be anywhere else. Let's clap hands and welcome our first time visitors. Yes. Amen and amen. We have a baby dedication on the 29th of September. Uh, please RSVP. We have men's bride. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> do we have men here? Yeah, yeah, yes. We, we, we have men's bride on the 5th of October. It's a Saturday at 12 o'clock. So all men are welcome to come through for that. We have bring a soul Sunday. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure you can make a joyful noise to the Lord. Yeah, you can make a joyful noise. Uh, maybe let's do this. Just tell your neighbor. We have bring a soul Sunday. Make sure you bring a soul. Yeah, no, no, don't be scared of them. Just tell them, make sure you bring a soul. Yes, make sure you bring a soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't worry. I think Mr. Nangweda said it very nicely. Don't worry about where your soul will be seated. We will make sure that your soul have a seat. Just, just tell your neighbor that. We will make sure your soul has a seat. Yeah, so just bring a soul, yes. So, so it's a bring a soul Sunday. It's one of those Sundays where the pastor moves on the anointing of standing outside and welcoming people that are coming in. Eh? Yeah, just to welcome you and your soul as well. Amen. Let's go to the word of God. Let's just go to the word of God. We're talking about the hidden treasure of the kingdom which is soul winning. We gave reasons last week as to why is soul winning the hidden treasure of the kingdom. Is that okay? What was reason number one? Which one do you have as number one? Yeah, you can, you can open your phone, you can check your notes. You just have to help the pastor to recap. Uh, uh, what was number one reason why uh, soul winning is the hidden treasure of the kingdom? What do you have? Yeah, no, you are allowed to talk in the church. This is the... Number three reason, let's get it this side. You were, you were very much talkative when this side was supposed to give. So give us reason number three. What is reason number three? Oh, am I never to, oh yes. So that next week, next week you don't say oh yes. Oh, take your phone and take notes. What is the third reason? Wow, let's clap hands for them. Wow, 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 wow. Yes, number four. I, I did give number four. Yes, number four. What, what is uh, the fourth reason this side? 
over the repentance of one, yeah, compared to the 99 souls. Let's clap for this side. Look, just stick on your lane this side. The other side must stick on their lane. Yes, so, so we, we, we have to, to understand that. So today I'm giving you number five. I didn't give you number five. I'm concluding this series. Yes, number five. Just tell your neighbor, you, if you have a smartphone, it's smart enough to take notes in church. Yeah, just tell them, if you have a smartphone, it's smart enough to take notes. In church, unless it's not a smartphone. Yes, number five, soul winning is a hidden treasure because of the love of the Father for souls. Because of the love of the Father for souls. Do you have that one? Soul winning. Remember, I might recap. Uh, soul winning. What do you have as number five? I have to check that today. I think today I'm moving in a teaching anointing. Yes. What is number five? Wow. Now you took notes. Yes. Yes. Let's read the scriptures. Let's read the scriptures. Uh, Second Peter 3 verse 9 yes don't worry uh, we're going to finish at, at 12 o'clock Second Peter 3 verse 9 do we have that media team I think media team needs encouragement just clap hands and encourage them yes 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 you see you see, let's encourage them some more because there's a lot of verses let's encourage them so that they can they can up their game, yes. One, two, three, let's read. Okay. Uh, second Peter three, verse nine, let's read it again. I don't want you, look, I'm a pastor, so I'm, I want you to remember the scripture. So let's read it again. One, two, three, let's read. Father, we are so grateful and so thankful for your word. Your word is life. Yahweh the Spirit, give life to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, soul winning is a hidden treasure because of the love of the Father for soul. Uh, that God is not slack or God is not lazy. He's not relaxed about his promises. He's not relaxed. He's not slack about his promises. And then he says, he says something, it's long-suffering towards us. Now, long-suffering, it, it really means to suffer long. It's patient, it's patient towards us. Uh, perhaps the, the King James English might be problematic, but it means that he's patient towards us. Why is he patient with us? Because anyone that is impatient with people wants them not to be saved. When you are not patient with people, you don't love souls. Oh, Madam Fundi, see this one. I, this one was drunk last week, and then I must still bring him to church. Yes. Yes. Let's bring them to church. Buy them coffee. Buy them water. Do something, but bring them to church. So God is not is not slack about his promises, but, but, but that one thing is not willing. What does it say? Let's read it together from not willing. One, two, three, let's read. That one thing God is not willing. Yes. It's not about your car. Uh, the only thing he will not allow it is that any should perish without coming to repentance. God does not want anyone to perish. God does not want anyone to perish. God does 
not want anyone to perish. God does not want anyone to perish. He's not willing. You say, oh, even a murderer. Yes, he's not willing that a murderer should perish. He's not willing that any should perish. He's not willing that any should perish. Why are you willing? As for God, <laughs> he's not willing. Just ask your neighbor, why are you willing for people to perish? Well, well, yeah, just ask them, why are you willing for your friends to go to hell when they have you? Yes, just ask them one more. Once more, ask them. Ask him. Don't, don't, don't be scared of him. Ask him. Yeah, why, why are you willing? Yeah, yes. Why, why are you willing for your partner to die without knowing Jesus as a Lord? Why are you willing? Why, why are you willing? You should not be resting. You should be praying day and night for their salvation. If the problem is that you are too comfortable with yourself. You think salvation is for you. Oh, me, I'm good. I'm going to heaven. Oh, me, I'm good. Me and my family are good. Why are you willing? Just, just take down my volume a bit, uh, Amu. Yes. Why, why are you willing? Why, why are you willing? Why are you willing? Oh. Do you imagine having a cure for cancer? And you keep quiet with it. Oh, that would be worse than witchcraft. Just tell your neighbor. If you had a cure for, for cancer and you keep quiet with it, that's worse than witchcraft. Just tell your neighbor that. Will you just tell them? Yeah, if you had a cure for cancer, eh? for cancer, and you keep quiet with it, have you, have you told them? Tell them you should be arrested if you do that. You should be arrested if you do that. Yeah. But this is not a cure for cancer. This is about salvation of people. That anyone who believes in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. Jesus is the savior of the world. And you keep quiet with him. Because you are willing that your friends go to hell while they have you. You are willing that your family member go to hell without you. Even your colleagues, you are even proud. Ah, keep my head in. Next time you say that word, may the Holy Spirit remind you that you are willing that they die that way. God is not willing. John 3, 16. He's so much not willing that he sent Jesus for that reason. He's so much not willing. He said, no, they cannot die this way. I'm not willing that they should perish. What will you do to get a soul? He's not asking you to let go of your begotten son. He's asking you to win the loss. He's not willing to let go of his only begotten son. Will you let go of your Saturday? Will you let go of your hour? And just tell somebody that I'm not willing that you should perish without Jesus. Will on Sunday the 6th, will you spare a moment? If it means you must go to their room and wake them up or go to their house and pick them up, are you willing to do that? God was not willing. And because he was not willing, he sent his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. Why is the church relaxed? Why are we relaxed? 1 Timothy 2 verse 4. First Timothy 2, verse number 4. I'm talking about the love of the Father. I want to show you how much God loves souls. Do you have it? Wow. Let's read it together. Maybe 
Okay, let's start from verse 3 so you don't think who it's a question as to who desires. Let's start there. One, two, three, let's read. Just keep it there. Do you know what's the desire of God? It's that you drive a Ferrari. No, I have nothing against Ferraris. It's actually a nice car. You feel closer to the ground. <laughs> but when, it, when you are in it and it's moving, you feel closer to heaven. So, so it's a good car. But God's desire, hey, hey, God's desire is that all men should be saved. Have you ever wondered what is God's dream? <laughs> have you ever wondered what is God's desire? Have you ever wondered what God desires? Have you ever wondered what God desires? Have you ever wondered, oh, he desires for you to be a millionaire. Look, that's a, that's a bonus. Eh? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added to you. His sole desire, the reason why he sent Jesus, it was to fulfill his desire. His desire is that all should be saved. What's God's desire? All should be saved. What's God's desire? What's God's desire? All should be saved. Does all include a murderer? Oh, so God desires that a murderer should be saved. Does all include a prostitute? Yes, that means God desires for them to be saved. Does all include your enemy? Yes. Yes. I, I, don't even say, oh, you, oh they, so I wish they could burn in hell. No, 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 calm down, calm down. Your wish is against God's wish. Yes. Your, your wish is against God's wish. God's dream and desire is that all should be saved. Will you fulfill his desire? What have you done to help God fulfill that desire? In this year, 2024, what have you done to help God fulfill that desire? I know you, you, you have done something to fulfill your own desires. But we are talking about the desire of God. The desire. Have you ever wondered what God desires? Have you ever wondered in your walk with him what he desires? What is his dream? What is his dream? Any soul, I said that last week, any soul that dies without knowing Jesus is a loss for the kingdom. That can never be recovered. We have to play our part. We have to play our part. Yes, that's what I'm preaching about. Yes. We have to play our part. Ezekiel 18 verse 4. We have to play our part. We have to play our part. We have to help God. You, you cannot, listen to me, let me teach you something. You cannot fulfill God's desires and he fails to fulfill your own desires. You cannot fulfill the dream of God and God fails to fulfill your dreams. That's what Jesus was saying. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these other things shall be added to you. When did we become the main one? When did our desires become the main thing? When did our desires and our dreams become bigger than the dream of God and the desire of God? That God desired this so much, he sent Jesus. John 3.16 will tell you that. That was just to fulfill that. And then when he, when he was done with Jesus, he desired it so much that he sent the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8 will tell you that. He desired it so much that he gave Jesus 
a way for the saving of people. And he desired it so much that he gave the Holy Spirit to us so that we can use this power for salvation of men. Because Lord, the power of God was not for playing with it. The power of God is that which changes men and people's life. Let's read the scripture. Ezekiel 18 verse 4. Ezekiel media team is in the Old Testament. It start with E. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. One, two, three. Let's read. <laughs> All souls. You know, we like being private with God. Well, I have good news for you. He sent me here today as his servant to tell you that all souls are his. All souls, even the ones you don't like, they are his. And that's why he desires for all to be saved. Because in the beginning, all souls are his in any case. And he will want all of them to be saved. So you and I, we have to join him in this great work. We have to join him in this great work. We have to join him in fulfilling his desires, in fulfilling his dream. And I promise you, when you make his desire your priority, he will make you priority in his life. No one prioritizes God end up being a beggar in life. That's why Jesus says, those who have forsaken their houses, forsaken their families and their children, they shall receive a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come. You cannot prioritize God and end up being last in life. You cannot prioritize God and end up being his last priority. Those that attend to what is close to his heart, he attends to what is close to their heart. There are things that we don't have to pray about. Yes. Let me show you in the Bible. Because I, I think I might only end here. Let me show you. There's things that you don't have to pray about. I want to come back. There are things in this life, John 15, 16, that you don't have to pray about. That's a ram that when you prioritize what God prioritizes, you become his priority. One, two, three, let's read. So, so let me teach you something. When you read the Bible, there are two things you must always look for. You must look for God's promise, okay, or his responsibility. Okay, that's one. And then you must look for your responsibility. Okay, so in the Bible, there's always a human responsibility and God's responsibility. Just as salvation is for free. But to be saved, you must believe that's your responsibility. And then you confess with your mouth. So I want us to read the scripture with that in mind. One, two, three, let's read. Okay, keep that scripture. So God chose you. You are God's choice. Yeah. You are God's choice. You are, you, are, you are his chosen person to fulfill his dream. And this dream is that you must go and do what? And bear fruits. So you are chosen and appointed. Well, I'm an engineer, a mining engineer. So I believe so much 
in legal appointment that when you are appointed, you are accountable for it. It's your responsibility. It's your primary role. Even if you delegate it, you can't delegate accountability. You are still accountable for it. I believe it. And in judgment day, God will judge all of us. And he will say, I appointed you. Yes, that's what judgment day is about. Judgment day, judgment will start in the house of God. Because why will you judge people who already their destiny is hell? So that's why the Bible says, judgment day will start in the house of the Lord. In fact, it will start with the pastor. Yes. I'm going to start with the pastor. Everything he said in the pulpit, God says, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to judge you on it. I'm going to judge you on the motives you have when you did something. It's going to start it there. But one of the judgment that will happen is that God has appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And you're going to show up to him. He says, in that day, they will say, we cast out devils in your names. And he said, I didn't know you because your appointment was not for casting out devils it was for winning souls and he didn't win any so in your name we healed the sick and he said well that's secondary it's not primary the primary thing where is your fruit and some of us is going to show our husbands that are you willing for your husband to go to hell when he has you are you willing for your mother to go to hell while they have you? Are you willing for your friends to go to hell while they have you? So one of our appointments is that. Go out and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. We'll talk about it another time. There are those who can eat fruits. There are Christians that eat fruits. Fruits that were supposed to be presented before God. You kill them by gossiping. Yes. All gossipers, you must read the Bible, and murderers and so on, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh yes. Oh, just tell your neighbor, don't eat the fruits. You need to present them there before God. Tell them you need to present. Yeah. Can you be more kind? Just tell them, just be more kind, please. Yeah, just be more kind. Be more love. I mean, like really, just, just, just mind your own business. Tell them, mind your own business. It's biblical. Mind your own business. Yes. Oh, yes. They made Jesus angry. And he said, instead of focusing on someone's eye, look at the plug that's on your eye. Yes. And, and, and I'm here today to announce, I'm announcing to all fruit eaters that your judgment awaits you. Your judgment awaits you. Focus on yourself. Focus on yourself. People know that a Holy Spirit, that's a conscious. Every human being has a conscious. Yeah, if you are saved, this is the proof of salvation, by the way. When you are saved, you have a conscience, and your conscience becomes the spirit that God uses to talk to you. Even if you were a player before, when you are playing now, the, the, the conscience tells you, hey, stop playing. So, so God has anointed the Holy Spirit for that. Don't be a Holy Spirit. Work on your life. And he says, so that you bear fruit. Why? So that, what, what does he say? What does he say? The next thing. And, and your fruit should remain. So that what? What? That's a ram. That's a ram in Christianity. I'm closing with this. That's a ram in Christianity. That is only reserved for soul winners. He says, so that you do what? Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. You have no right to ask the Father. You are not on that realm if you have never won a soul. Let me repeat it. You are not on that realm if you have never won a soul in your life. Let's make it more recent. If you have never won a soul this year, you are not on that realm. 
Yes. Oh yes, I'm saying it. You are not on that realm. The realm is reserved for those that are chosen and appointed. That go out and win souls or bring fruit. Then you will ask the father. Whatsoever you ask the father in my name. That I will give it to you. Go and study the life of soul winners. You will see they live long and they don't pray to live long. Go and study the life of their children. That we have forgotten this hidden treasure of the kingdom. It puts you on a different rank. You know? Yes, Lord. Let's have the band. Well, let me go to the next point. Because they are connected. I want to show you something and I'm done and I'm out of here. Daniel 12 verse 3 that that's a ram God people don't understand David's life in fact they are very judgmental of most of the bad things he has done but you don't understand the level and the ram that worship and praise and worship brought him before God. That he was a man after the heart of God. And I'm saying to you, the heart of God is souls. If you were to open the heart of God and see his heart, his heart will be souls, 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 souls. And you are running after everything else except his heart. And I'm here today sent by God to say church we have an opportunity on the 6th of October to do all we can to bring souls to the Lord because the next reason it's a hidden treasure because those that win souls they are stars forever they are stars forever. 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 For he who wins souls is wise. And those who are wise shall shine like God. And those who turn many to righteousness, they shall shine like the stars forever. Do you want to be a star? Do you want to be a kingdom star? How, who have you turned to righteousness? Who can you point to God and say, this one used to be a drunkard, but I brought them to church and they have turned to righteousness. If you want to be a star, you don't become a star because you have been in church 20 years. That doesn't count. It's just the church attendance. Just as sleeping in a garage doesn't make you a car. Coming to church might not even make you a Christian. Receiving Jesus not makes you a Christian. If you want to be a star, you have to turn many to righteous. And I want to ask you today, are you a kingdom star? 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 Who have you turned to righteous? You don't become a star because of a car you drive. You don't become a star because of the money you have. You don't become a star because of anything else you have. You become a star by turning many by turning many to righteousness and I'm telling you that on that day <laughs> on that day when they say you are a star forever it means that even on judgment Revelations 2 verse 7 let's have the worship team here Revelations 2 verse 7 it says let he who has ear hear what the spirit says to the church to him who overcome I will make him eat by the tree of the life of life in the midst of the paradise I'm saying to you there's a special dinner that is reserved for those that turn many to righteousness they will eat by the tree of life <laughs> give me verse 10 oh yes oh yes verse 10 of the same chapter 
La brasa katarara, la brasa tarara. He says, and this ones, I will give them the crown of life. That the crown of life that is only. That's why Paul says, I've run my race, I've fought a good fight of faith, and there awaits for me a crown of life. Who the righteous God, the righteous God, will give it to me. You can't get the crown of life when you have never won a life. It's called a crown of life. Which life have you won? Let's stand on our feet. Which life have you won? Oh yes, La Just sing the song where you cut it. Yeah, don't start there. I'm here about crowns today. I'm here about crowns. I'm here about the crown of life. I'm here about the crown of life. Just sing the song, one verse, and then we're going to close. Yeah, For this church. Pray that you will open our eyes to see beyond this world. Pray that you will open our eyes to see beyond today and see eternity and realize that there's a crown of life that the righteous judge, the Lord, will give to each and every one of us. I pray that Lord, just as we make heaven, my prayer is not that we just make heaven, but that all of us May we receive the crown of life on that day. Oh, my prayer is not just to lead the church that will make heaven. That's just the start. But may each and every one of us receive a crown of life. The Lord, you will say to us on that day, well done, you faithful servant. We want to be congratulated by you. We want this church to be celebrated by you. We don't want to be celebrated by this man in this world but I pray for each and every one of them that Holy Spirit as we walk out of here may you remind us about eternity that on that day that's a crown of life that you will put on us even if this world doesn't celebrate us there's something greater than this world even when people don't celebrate us I pray that let no one in this church of God Die without winning a soul. May they not recover or take up your oil. So the Lord, you will congratulate us and crown us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. God bless you.